Hello, listeners. Mallory Wilsey here, chief producer of the Enrollify Network. And I want to take just a moment to tell you about another show on our podcast network that I co-host called Higher Ed Pulse. Higher Ed Pulse is your weekly spotlight on the latest in higher education marketing and enrollment. From headline news to social posts, insider insights to industry observations, join yours truly and Seth O'Dell as we share top stories from across the world of higher education. Each bite-sized 15-minute episode is packed with personality and designed to bring what's top of mind to the top of your feed. You can subscribe to the show by visiting podcast.enrollify.org or just search Higher Ed Pulse wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to Visionary Voices, the College President's Playbook, a podcast that serves as your backstage pass to an uplifting and positive view into the collaborative playbook of higher education presidents and their senior leaders. I'm your host, Dr. Brian Gross. Join me weekly for discussions with some of the best minds in higher education leadership, from presidents to provosts, enrollment managers to CFOs, CIOs to chief diversity officers, this show is your ticket to the most future-forward strategies that are impacting real results on college campuses today. Each week, I will be posting highlights and insights from our show. So let's connect. Visionary Voices is part of the Enrollified Network, a robust collection of podcasts designed to help higher education professionals like you grow. Explore our other shows at Enrollify.org or check out some of my personal favorites linked in the show notes below. Enrollify is made possible by Element 451, the leading AI-powered, all-in-one student engagement platform, helping institutions create meaningful, personalized, and engaging interactions with students. Learn more at Element451.com. Welcome to Visionary Voices, the College President's Playbook. This is an episode I am thrilled about. And for any college presidents or provosts out there that are listening, this is an episode that you are not going to want to miss. I have here with me today President Beaton Garcia, President of Chippewa Valley Technical College, and Dr. Livingston, Provost and Vice President for Academic and Student Affairs at Chippewa Valley Community College. And these are two campus leaders that are really paving new ground in the area of artificial intelligence and uh, creating new ways and access for students of all types. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having us. We're excited yeah, to be thank here. Thank you so much. President Bean Garcia, I want to start with um, a quote right from your website where it says, student dreams are our mission. And that really just stuck with me. That's amazing. Talk to me a little bit about Chippewa Valley Technical College and uh, meeting student dreams being a big part of your mission. Yes. Well, today is a great day to be a river otter. And that is our mascot. His name is Ollie. And uh, his, he's charismatic, engaging and fun. And that really describes our student body, inquisitive, curious and to work together. We encourage our students to dream big and to share with us what those dreams are and we'll help them get there. And so much of the work that we're doing here, we're achieving it in new ways and curious ways and we're happy to share it with others because we, we dream big, don't we, Lynette? Absolutely. Uh, I want to dive right into artificial intelligence. You know, I was at the College Board Forum this last November. I attended a session with school counselors and admissions professionals, and um, it felt to me that they were talking about AI the way that my high school teachers were talking about the internet when it first came out. You are doing some really amazing and innovative things with AI, and uh, I'd like to just kind of dive in. How did that come about, uh, this connection between uh, Chippewa Valley Technical College and all that you're doing? with uh, artificial intelligence. So just like any other college leader, we all in higher ed want to create exceptional learning experiences with quality materials for our students. And we want to remove barriers. And so we all do that in different ways. And for us, an area that we focused on was quality materials, particularly uh, in the in area of nursing and their textbooks. As you know, textbooks can be very expensive and can be a barrier to the successful completion of a program 
or uh, the way that a student progresses. And so they may choose to use an older textbook. Um, they may choose not to buy a textbook at all. And you can imagine that that greatly impedes their success in the course. And so our faculty, because they are creative, because they're curious and inquisitive, they got together and said, we can do better. We can be the hero of the story. And together, along with our sister schools across our uh, Wisconsin state system, we have um, got on this journey of creating textbooks for our nursing program and a few other courses as well, but primarily in the area of nursing and have reduced the cost of education for our students while still cr creating these immersive and beautiful learning environments. At the beginning, we had to use uh, video and actors and, and more of your traditional scenarios that you may be using. But as time progressed and we attracted more and more resources to our work and more of our books were being used on the national stage and internationally, our latest grant, the Open RN grant, um, that came to us from the Department of Education. We're so grateful for that, $2.5 million. That went a long way for us to create virtual reality scenarios where an instructor can't put on their Oculus headset and the students and all learn together in a in the same space. So we serve a lot of our rural districts. And so to be able to teach um, without the confines of, of geography is amazing for us. 11 counties, it's, it's, a, it's, a lot, it's a lot of Wisconsin that we reach. And so to be able to leverage technology, to be able to create these immersive spaces for our students to learn was really a dream come true for us. And uh, most recently uh, through this grant, we were also able to hire very um, talented instructional designers that using AI were able to create patients that were culturally appropriate, that had the uh, tonality and the things that our students would encounter out in the field. So before our deans had to think, well, what did a patient from a certain other country sound like? And, and what kind of, of accent would they have? And what do we name them? Well, with AI, we're able to create these rich scenarios with culturally appropriate names, and then we can animate them through video, uh, audio, and they actually have the tonality from those countries. And on top of that, we were able to layer in the actual issue that the, the patient was suffering. So if we had a, a patient from India and uh, he had a difficulty uh, breathing, it sounds just like a patient from that country with that breathlessness. How much more real of an environment can we create for our students? Well, the sky's been the limit with AI and it's been a wonderful thing. And these are um, softwares that are accessible to all. You just have to allow your people to get familiar with them and to learn how to use them. And uh, and then then you really are limited only by, by your creativity. It's been an amazing journey for us. This is amazing. Your your energy and your passion for this is just, uh, I wish that people could see your face as you talk <laughs> about this. All right. So uh, Visionary Voices is all about uh, generating positive results on campus. I have to go to you, uh, Dr. Livingston. How do you get a faculty on board? Um, I heard President Beaton Garcia talk about the faculty being on board now, uh, but we have amazing faculty members at Hartwick College and everywhere I've ever worked. And uh, it, you don't just snap your fingers and, and get a group of faculty to come on board with an initiative about this. So talk to me about uh, your role in this project. The first thing was to show the whole faculty because it was a pretty small group of individuals who were collaborating together on this project. And once they were able to showcase to our entire faculty at our welcome back in service days, well, that was enough to, to pique the interest of the rest of our faculty group. And they wanted to learn more. How then could they also incorporate AI into their work? Um, so, so that's what it took, hearing from other faculty and seeing a way. And then, of course, our very smart faculty come up with the ideas of how they can incorporate AI into their efforts. And they let us know what they need. Our educational 
Environmental Technology Department then has created a forum for faculty to continue to share as they progress in their efforts. So our faculty try something using AI. For example, it could be preparing for interviews um, to help someone feel more comfortable. They can practice with their thought partner or tutor um, utilizing AI. And then they're able to post that out on our Canvas community that our faculty can choose to follow and they learn from one another, they comment, and then they reach out to one another to say, teach me what you did. And then of course, we, our faculty find something new to do and they share with others. So it's that's really what it's taken is just showing them and then giving them the space and the permission to utilize the technology and leaning into our mission of making sure that we're innovative and relevant. Um, so certainly embracing the technology. President Beaton Garcia, I'd love to have you tell me a little bit about how you collaborate uh, with other presidents out there. Absolutely. So um, leadership can be a little lonely, Brian. And so it's really important to be able to find like-minded individuals who um, want to continue to do this work and do it in new and innovative ways. And for me, AFIT has been that partner. So it is the Alliance of Transformative um, Educators, and it's AFIT higher if you want to visit us. And this alliance of educators are really CEOs or college presidents from all over the nation who want to have a transformative experience at their institutions and they want to be innovative. And so um, if you are a college president or an aspiring college president, maybe have your president um, have check them out and, and perhaps come to one of our summer institutes. It's really about learning from each other and learning from outside of our industry and having that, uh, trans, that, that knowledge transferred in to higher education. Not all great ideas come from higher education. Sometimes we have to learn from other sectors. And I found that to be a, a wonderful organization that allows us to do just that. That's awesome. I love giving the audience resources. Can you give us the website one more time? The website is afithighered.com, A-F-I-T-H-I, higher-ed.com. And it's the Alliance for Innovation and Transformation. Well, thank you so much for that resource. I'm interested in how this initiative may have impacted community partnerships. You're part of the Chippewa Valley Technical College District. And as I think about you, the need for jobs and the need for growing technical education programs, what's the relationship between what you're doing uh, with AI and your community partnerships? Well, certainly... Um... Our business and industry partners are looking to see how they can use these types of technologies within their own field. And so our workforce development um, staff work closely with business, business and industry so they can learn from the techniques and the tools that we're using to craft their own um, trainings and uh even recruitment to our area. But also, and maybe Lynette would want to weigh in on this, but also our K-12 partners. We want our students that are in the high schools to already be familiar and AI literate because this is going to be a skill that you're going to need to know just like you would anything else, Word, Excel. And as a matter of fact, Dr. Livingston is doing an amazing job of at the program level, adding these outcomes to all of our programs, not just nursing. And so we're just showing what can be done in one sector, but it's really applicable to all. So you're absolutely right. Right now we have four core abilities is what we call them. Essentially our durable skills or our employability skills. And we are working with a group of faculty and adding new criteria to each one of the four core abilities connected to AI um, because we think it's that important. So we want assurance that every student that graduates from CVTC will have um, exposure and competence um, when it comes to incorporating AI into employment. And the example um, that we just shared regarding, regarding our own faculty in service and our faculty embracing is truly something we've been able to share with our K-12 partners. So we have over 40 different school districts in the region that we serve, and we were able to share our work with that team. Um, since then, we've had a number of them reach out saying that they would like to work with our educational 
technology team and learn more about it. What we don't want is for there to be fear of um, AI taking things away or not having a quality education. So we feel great about paving the way and showing our K-12 partners how they too can be part of this important work to ensure that all of our students are college and career and ready. I will also add, as mentioned, we are certainly interacting with our business communities. We serve a diverse group of businesses here within the Chippewa Valley. Each one of our programs has program advisory committee at, um, that meets twice per year. During our fall term, we asked about the impact of AI in their particular field, and we learned a lot. And um, the first part of April, we are, excuse me, of March, we're having a convening with a group of, of our business thought leaders to help us consider um, where do we need to go in terms of workforce training within the Valley so that everyone is ready for this emerging technology. That is such an important point, you know, that I wanted to bring up. I'm glad you brought it up because at Chippewa Valley, you're, of course, incorporating this into your degree programs, but that you're also focusing on upskilling uh, members of the community uh, through uh, various certifications. So you're not just talking about the traditional college age adult, but you're actually having the opportunity to uh, educate generations of individuals within your within your region. Absolutely. The incumbent worker um, is certainly one of our large populations of those who we serve. And as a matter of fact, in, in some sectors, we even have classrooms right there where they work. And so why wouldn't we bring this technology to them? Um, it's really an exciting time to be in education, I have to tell you, Brian. Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Brian Gross from Visionary Voices. I have some really exciting news to share with you. I'll be at the Engage Summit in Raleigh on June 25th and 26th, and I'd love to meet you there. Hosted by Element 451, the Engage Summit is your roadmap for AI readiness in higher education. Sessions will focus on cutting-edge AI applications that are reshaping student outreach, enhancing staff productivity, and offering insights into ROI. This isn't your typical conference. It's a strategic summit where you'll learn from some of the best about leveraging AI and digital strategies in higher ed marketing. Imagine two days filled with hands-on sessions, real-world stories, and the chance to network with the top minds in the field. You'll leave with practical, transformational takeaways as you learn how AI fosters a more personalized, efficient approach from recruitment to student success. Oh, and the best part? The Engage Summit is incredibly affordable. Use the discount code ENROLLIFY50 and you can register for just $99. So join me and many of my fellow Enrollify Network creators at the Engage Summit this June. Learn more and register at engage.element451.com. We can't wait to see you there. Awesome. So I want to go back to the Open RN project and just kind of bring to life a, a little bit for our listeners out there um, some of the innov innovative ways in which uh, the Open RN program is providing access on the ground. We have you know eleven textbooks that we have already um, created, and these last five that we did with the Open RN allowed us to really uh, leverage a technology that now exists and didn't exist when we first started this work. And now we received another grant, a next gen grant that will help us with the next iteration of our of our textbooks. And so, just to be clear, the textbooks are written by our faculty. Uh, the content. Um, the materials is not created by AI, they're created by our instructors, but it's really the rich scenarios, it's the um, spaces in which to practice what they're learning and to gauge mastery of topics that we use the virtual reality. So the, the content is created and taught by our faculty and then we use the technology to reinforce the concepts and to be able to show students what this would look like in the field. Before, we really had to uh, either imagine or be more creative with our scenarios. Now we can do that in a much faster pace um, with the use of a generative AI, particularly in, te in the text version, allows us to create rich dialogues and scenarios and really brainstorm what uh, a particular scenario in the healthcare industry would look like. Before our deans and faculty have to sit down and think it through and say, well, what would that look like? And let's, and that, that iterative process just took a lot longer with this generative um, AI 
text, we're able to create the dialogue very quickly and then adapt it to the, what we're looking for and make better solutions really to boost our efficiency is probably the best way to put it. And then we can create the actual scenario with faces that don't really exist. These are completely created through generative AI. And we can say we need a, uh, a, a pediatric patient that fits this um, particular scenario and uh, mid journey will give us five, six, 12 images. We pick the one that we like the most, and then we create a, vo create a voice for that patient and then use the text version of the generative AI to actually animate and create the entire scenario done by maybe one or two designers in a much quicker and more uh, efficient process um, and less expensive too, I should say. So it allows uh, smaller schools, um, maybe with not as many resources to create the same quality immersive uh, learning experiences that before it took a lot more um, financial and, and investment in people. Now, I will say that as a college president, you have to prioritize this work if you want to do it, and you have to give your instructional designers and your faculty the time and space in which to learn how to use these tools and to actually create. And so if you're willing to do that and you're willing to say no to certain things so this can be done, then you can create these types of, of experiences for your students as well. Great. That is such an important piece. You know, being uh, being on a college campus myself is is saying no to certain things so that you could invest in other things. Um, how did you build a culture where you were able to say no to certain things? Most, if not all ideas brought to us are fabulous ideas. We just can't do them all at the same time. And so we have to prioritize and say, what is it that we want to focus on right now? And having the ability to have these um, significant and transformative resources, we had to leverage that time that we had. And so we said, okay, we're going to say no or put things on a back burner for a little bit on these other things. And we'll come back to them, just not right now. And then now let's just focus on this. And so we've been able to do that at our institution um, in, in a number of ways, but uh, really being able to be really, really great at a few things instead of trying to do it all at the same time. This is amazing. Just a couple other questions. Uh, how are you assessing uh, what's happening on the ground? Are you getting any feedback back from students and are you collecting data on these efforts? Well, we sure are. Um, I can share with you that right away as we got started with the OpenRM project, we have 16 technical colleges within our system. Four of them agreed to work with us immediately on developing textbooks. Um, and then all of them said that it, ultimately they would start utilizing the resources, but they didn't do so immediately. Those that did, however, we were able to, uh, to collect student success data. We have that through a client reporting system at our state. And we found that the, the students that were using the open RN OER textbooks had a 5% course success increase. So that was real data in real time. Um, and that was enough for us to be able to show that the early adopters were seeing success. So that was the proof that was um, necessary to help to build really that coalition of joiners, if you will. Um, and then I think even more important, um, or equally I should say important, is that not only you know do students need to be successful in their courses, and we all know that nursing is a very rigorous program, but even once they graduate from the, the nursing degree program, they have to pass the NCLEX exam. And so that is always hanging over the heads of students from day one of courses. Um, so our, our students that first went through the cohort of using OpenRN um, resources and then took the new NCLEX assessment, we had a hundred percent pass rate, Brian. So you know what? Can't can't do anything better than that. So there's our data and, you know, we, we contribute that to the accessibility that you heard of. So students aren't having to choose now between a textbook and paying for transportation or childcare. So everyone has access on day one and it really helps to level the playing ground and we're so proud of that. 
I love that. And it ties right back to what we started uh, talking about, which is uh, your mission and uh, making students' dreams a reality. And uh, it really seems like this technology is supporting your collaborative efforts to do that. Um, I'd love to ask you a couple of questions about advice that you have. Um, first, uh, regarding the use of AI, uh, there are lots of college presidents and senior leaders at mid-size and large-size schools listening to this. Uh, what advice would you give them in how to incorporate uh, various elements of AI into the work that they're doing? Share, ask questions, look for um, other institutions that are willing to share, such as us, we're willing to have this conversation and have been having this conversation across the nation with many other schools. Don't be afraid of it. Um, this is a uh, technology that, sure, we all have concerns and we do understand that um, we will need to, to put some structure around it and make sure it is used for uh, good things, just like any other uh, technological advancement. But in this case, this technology brings us the opportunity uh, to, to be more equitable in our work. It allows us to use our resources in different ways that we have not seen before. So let's focus from our lens and from our perspective, what can we do with it? Yeah, so I, I believe that we can use this technology to boost our efficiency, to do things in new ways, to be able to um, utilize it in, in creative ways that can allow us to do more and to do it with, with less resources and less funding. And so if we can figure out uh, a tribe of early adopters and folks that are willing to work together um, to show each other what can be done and to share ideas and concepts, then, then you can scale that to your own institution and then you can put that in place. Uh, this technology isn't being, isn't being done to education. It's, it's, it's a change in how we how we live our lives. And so let's leverage it um, to help our students and to be able to do what we haven't been able to do before. That's right. We know our students are using AI in their daily lives or will continue to be. It's going to be changing the job market. Uh, the jobs right now that don't exist uh, will be will be informed by AI. And uh, you're really leading the way in, in terms of thinking about uh, the future and uh, the type of lives our students are going to be living, uh, you know, decades from now. And we're happy to share also the policies that we've put in place to gauge how it's being used in the classroom. Because a lot of the things that I've heard was, well, how do we help faculty feel more comfortable about it being used for assignments and whatnot? There's ways to, to use this and to share how we're using it. It doesn't make you any less of an expert uh, to use something that that, that um, helps you do the, do the work. And so if you can show your work to the instructor and say, I used AI for this assignment and this is how I did it, it becomes part of the learning. And so uh, changing our concept about how we're using this and being more open to it really allows for us to, to have a better relationship with our students. Because let's face it, Brian, it is being used in the classroom. We just have to show students how to do it ethically. Yeah, so smart. So smart. So as we wind down, um, we have all of these aspiring leaders. And uh, on this podcast, I really try to provide a counter narrative to this idea of who would want to be a college president, who would want to be a senior leader. I think it's such important work. And I hope that we could inspire a younger generation of professionals to want to do this important work. Um, uh, Provost Livingston, what would what would you say to an inspire an aspiring leader out there who may be thinking about um, having a senior leadership role? What advice would you give uh, she or he? Well, I would say go for it. Of course, number one, our educational community needs strong leaders, and um, we don't always need more of the same. We need new, fresh ideas, and um, put yourself out there surround yourself with an outstanding network of people that you can lean on. That's the most important thing, right? Um, because you can't do it alone. So it truly takes a, a village and having that strong network network is just critical, but um, we, we certainly need strong partners, um, strong presidents, strong senior leaders to continue moving education forward. Great. And uh, President Beaton Garcia, uh, you've broken a lot of ground at Chippewa Valley Technical College, first female, uh, first woman of color uh, to be uh, president at the college. What advice would you give a young professional who's an aspiring president? 
we need your gifts, your talents. And just like the, our provost just explained, be yourself. You are, you are enough. And if you love students, if you love learning, if you love helping your community, then make a plan to grow. Uh, surround yourself with different types of leadership styles and then find your own. Um, you are enough and we need you. That's the best message that we can give. I love it. You are enough and we need to. Those are uh, words worth repeating for sure. So we end every podcast. Um, we're building a Spotify playlist. And at the end of uh, the season, we're going to have a list of songs that um, are associated with uh, each each of the schools that we interview. So if I were to ask you to think of a song to be added to our playlist that best exemplifies either Chippewa Valley Technical College or your senior leadership team, uh, do you have a song you want to add to our playlist? We sure do. We like Brave by Sarah Barillas. Um, the song is about finding your voice, about being brave, by trying new things. And um, we tell our students to dream big, but I tell my leadership, te leadership team to dream big as well. And although we all have a voice at the table, we're one voice here at CBTC and we're brave. That's amazing. I love it. What a great way to end. I, I can't thank the two of you enough for your time. Uh, this has been such a motivating and inspirational uh, conversation with the two of you. And there's so much for our audience to learn about uh, the value of you know collaboration, being bold, community partnerships, and embracing uh, the technology to create uh, more access uh, for the betterment of our students. So thank you so much and uh, have a great day. Visionary Voices, the College President's Playbook, is part of the Enrollify Podcast Network. If you like this podcast, chances are you'll like other Enrollify shows too. Our podcast network is growing by the month, and we've got a plethora of marketing, enrollment, and higher ed technology shows that are jam-packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks, all designed to empower you to be a better higher ed professional. Our shows help higher ed marketers and admission professionals find their next big ideas and feature a huge selection of the industry's best. As your hosts, learn from Artis Kadu, Jamie Hunt, Allison Tercio, and so many more of your favorite leaders in higher ed. Enrollify is made possible by Element 451, the leading AI-powered, all-in-one student engagement platform, helping institutions create meaningful, personalized, and engaging interactions with students. Learn more at element451.com.